good to see you this evening. Praise the Lord. I hope you had a good day. Uh, we still got more folks coming in. I'm glad for this good crowd tonight, very good crowd. And uh, we sure want the Lord to meet with us in a mighty, mighty way. We still have some folks who are sick at home, some in the hospital, some here, there, and yonder. A lot of them's there or yonder, uh, but I'm glad you're here. All right? And uh, we're going to uh, uh, sing a congregation, uh, pray, sing a congregation song. The three in family is here, and he said today, how many of you want us to sing? I said, well, just sing all you know. <laughs> If you, if you sing all of those, he won't be able to preach. <laughs> it will be a real while. And uh, they'll sing some. They'll sing some for us. I don't know how many. Maybe four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And, uh, but uh, they're back here in the guest house, and they're going to be leaving out later in the week and uh, headed up to Maine. Bro, where it's nice and sunny and warm. <laughs> oh, boy. But uh, they're here for a couple of days, and, and uh, it's, 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 uh, I love having them here, don't you? What a blessing it is. All right, we're going to pray. Then we're going to sing number 191. And then I'll have a couple of announcements to make, and then they'll come up and sing for us, okay? All right, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are once again so thankful to be in this place. And we thank you, Lord, for the, for the excellent crowd that's here tonight. And, Lord, we, uh, we just trust that uh, we'll yield ourselves to you. And once again, we would say, God, speak to me. So, God, speak to me tonight in this service. And, Lord, as you speak to me, I pray, God, I'll, I'll listen carefully, do what you tell me to do. Bless the service in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 191, 191, count your blessings. Just I want to remind you that uh, uh, Thanksgiving's two days away, and or one day really now. And I hope if you got traveling somewhere, you got folks coming in, you'll have a wonderful time together, enjoy each other's company. And if you're going off for the weekend, oh, the highways will be full tomorrow, and Friday and Saturday. Oh uh, boy! So uh, I don't know where you're headed. It might just be good just to stay home. Amen. Amen. How many of you got family coming in? Huh? Got some coming in. How many of you going off somewhere? I got a few going off. So we got folks coming and going. That's supposed to be funny. <laughs> there you go. Now you laugh about it. All right. All right. Uh, uh, as I think about uh, yesterday, we had the, this, the funeral service for Mrs. Polk. And of course, it was a very, very small family. And she had and she vividly instructed me uh, more than one time that. She's a preacher. I got family. Most of my family is lost. They need to be saved. You, you just preach to them. 
So yesterday, I really preached to them. <laughs> I really preached to them. And of course, sometimes when you preach, you don't, you don't know if you're getting it. You, don't, you just don't know if they're getting it or not. I do know this. You can plant a seed, water the seed's been planted, and I'm trusting somewhere down the road, Holy Spirit, do something with what happened yesterday. Amen. And uh, all right, uh, we want to, to welcome the Thrin family back with us. We've, uh, they were here at camp meeting last year, and of course, uh, and, and came down to be with us and spent, uh, what, two weeks, something like that. And uh, so uh, uh, we want this to be a home to them where they can come just have a big time. And I promise you, they like that guest house back there. Amen. And, uh, of course, they still use their, their big family bus they stay in. And I think the guys are staying there or something like sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Now, which one had a birthday? Melody, Melody, had a birthday today. She's just looking at me like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How old are you? Fifteen. Boy, I tell you what. Hmm. Got any teenage boys back there? <laughs> Stand up, boy. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, well, I tell you what, Melanie, you just go ahead and, and uh, uh, enjoy being 15. Amen. Amen. And then don't try to be 16, just be 15, okay? All right. All right. Uh huh? That's good. That's good preaching. I preached the message years ago. You've kept them. Don't rush the washing machine. They want to skip cycles. And kids want to skip cycles. If you do, you won't, you'll end up, you won't be as clean as you should. That's what that wash machine's all about, getting them clothes clean. <laughs> Go through the, every cycle's for a purpose. So every, every, every year in your life is like a cycle. You try to skip two or three years, you'll be messed up. And the funny thing about it, when, and, and when they get to be like 30, they want, they want you know, when they're 15, they want to be 20. Okay, and then 20, they want to be 30. Then when they get to be 40, they want to be 20 again. Yeah. <laughs> they want to reverse the clock. All right, well, uh, y'all ready to come do some singing for us? And uh, we won't sing you to death. We'll just let you sing in for a while, okay? And uh, <clears throat> we, are, we are tonight going to receive an offering for the kids, not for the mom and daddy, but for the kids. And uh, we'll, we'll give them a, a love offering check before they leave and head up north, but tonight, later. So what we're, here's how we're going to do the love offering. I know you didn't come prepared to give tonight, and, uh, but if you have your checkbook with you, if you want to make a check out, Make it out to the church, okay? And then we'll get that to Miss Gloria. And then we'll trust mom and daddy to take the offering for the kids yes, sir. and distribute it accordingly. Yes, sir. Okay? Y'all got that, kids? Yes, sir. Accordingly. <laughs> All right. Which means the baby don't get as much. The baby don't get as much as you do. <laughs> yeah, the baby, the baby gets a quarter. No, no, no. Baby wants that ball over there. Yeah. You doing okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. The girls doing okay? Yes, sir. <laughs> I feel sorry for you, buddy. <laughs> you and your dad and your little brother here. I, amen. All right, y'all sing. Amen. Yes, let's, let's have a time now, okay? Amen. 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 This is not a funeral, praise God. <laughs> Just enjoy the Lord a little bit tonight. Amen. Love this time of year. And uh, we should always be thinking about what God's done for us, but right. this time of year is just kind of special. Yeah. And uh, so let's sing I Am Amazed. I am amazed at what my God has done. He loved me so much, he gave his only son. To die on a rugged cross to set me free.
God who built a master plan to pay the sacrifice for fallen man. Oh, what a mighty price that he did pay when Jesus freely shed his blood that day. To die on a rugged cross to set me free. I am amazed at what he did for me. I am amazed at what he did for me. Amen. 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 I feel a little bubbling in my soul already. Man, on the first song. Praise the Lord. Well, let's uh, let's let's sing about. Uh, we'll see you through. We'll sing after. Um, you know, just looking at uh, our lives and looking back over uh, the past year, seeing how God has led us. And I'm sure you can, as you look over your lives the past year or so, see the leading that God has brought about in your lives. Um, there's things that we came up to that we didn't know we we're going to face. That's right. Right? That's exactly right. But it didn't take God by surprise. Right. Amen. It was part of his plan all along. And um, I love this song. Wherever he guides, he's going to provide. Amen. Yes, he will. And uh, amen, amen. many times he uses his people to provide. Yeah. And uh, God's been faithful to provide for us. Not only, you know, a lot of times we think about God's provision, we think about, you know, finances and material things. But giving us the strength, the comfort, the joy, the peace that we need on a daily basis in that moment. You know, a word in season, just just when you need it most, he's there. And uh, so I, I love this song. It's one of my favorites that we sing now. It says, he will see you through. They were standing on the shoreline when the master gave the word to load the boat and sail across the sea. Beginning with no worries, but very soon they found that a sunny day would soon turn into night. He heard them crying desperately as the waves crashed hard against the vessel's side. It seemed all hope had died, but the master soon replied, speaking peace he calmed the raging tide. God will not guide where he will not provide. He'll never lead you through a valley without walking by your side. And when the storms around you cease, it's because the Prince of Peace has already walked ahead of you. And I know he will see Are the trials that you're facing more than you can bear? Are you holding on, trying to survive? Do you find that there's no answer in the time of your despair? 
And you're longing just to hear him one more time. I can say I know exactly what you're facing. And though you've heard it all a thousand times before, if you look just one more time, I am sure that you will find he's never left you stand. And when the storms around you cease, it's because the Prince of Peace has already walked ahead of you. And I know he will see you through. When the storm around you rages and the strong winds knock you down, when the lights of home are fading, it's then and there I've found. God will not guide where he will not provide. He'll never lead you through a valley without walking by your side. And when the storms around you cease, it's because the Prince of Peace has already walked ahead of you. And I know He will see you through. Yes, I know He will see you through. like camp meeting in here tonight. Let's sing about camp meeting. Amen. Let's sing about the old fashioned days. Let's sing that one. <clears throat> Amen. I was just, I was talking with my dad a few days ago. Actually, I think it was just today I was talking with him and, uh, and telling him where we're at. Of course, every time they call, where are you at now, son? So, so I told him we're down here and I said, I said, Dad, I said, you got to come down to this camp meeting. I said, any camp meeting you can come to, come to this one in April. And um, I, love, I love camp meeting time. I love the spirit of that meeting. And I know that it comes from uh, the spirit that's in this church. And uh, appreciate that. I'm really thankful for it. And uh, we do love coming. It does feel like coming home. And uh, when we pulled in, we got the bus and we have the van too on this trip because uh, the bus we're going to leave here, and we got the van to drive back north into the cold. And the bus doesn't like the cold, and uh, I'm, I agree with the bus. But uh, the bus gets to stay down here. We go back north. But uh, when we when we came in, I had Rachel drive ahead because last time we we uh, came here, my GPS on the bus. I've got an RV GPS for that, and I've got you know the regular Google Maps. Well, the RV GPS put us on a dead-end road out here in the middle of somewhere. Yeah. And, uh, and I, had to, I had the trailer on the back, and the road wasn't wide enough to turn around. And mm. At the end of the road was a no trespassing sign and a great big field. And uh, well, I didn't know what I was going to do, but one of the neighbors went and said, well, I'll go talk to this guy, and he talked to him, and he let me turn around in his field. I didn't want that to happen again. So I had Rachel go ahead. I said, you go ahead, follow Google Maps this time, go ahead and see if it, you know, does okay. And it did okay. So she was here first. So she called me and said, the way's clear. So I brought the bus in, and I pulled in. She was already in the house, and I walked in the door, and she said, welcome home. <laughs> so it really does feel like coming home when we're here and uh, we're very very grateful thankful that God allowed us to uh, allowed our paths to cross Amen. and uh, and uh, so let, let's sing about the old this is called old camp meeting days no, nowhere in the song do you hear the word camp meeting but it's on the title so amen <clears throat> 
Oh, how well I remember in the old-fashioned days When some old-fashioned people had some old-fashioned ways In the old-fashioned meeting as they tarried there In the old-fashioned manner how God answered their prayer It was an old-fashioned old meeting in an old-fashioned place Old-fashioned people had some old-fashioned praise. As an old-fashioned old sinner, I began to pray. And God heard me and saved me in the old-fashioned way. Well, they say it is better. Things have changed, don't you know? And the people in general seem to think it is so. And they call me old-fashioned when I dare to say. That I like it far better in the old-fashioned way. It was an old-fashioned meeting in an old-fashioned place. Where some old-fashioned people had some old-fashioned praise. As an old-fashioned sinner, I began to pray. And God heard me and saved me in the old-fashioned way. It was an old-fashioned meeting in an Place where some old fashioned people had some old fashioned praise. As an old fashioned sinner, I began to pray. And God heard me and saved me in the old fashioned way. As an old fashioned sinner, I began to pray. And God heard me and saved me in the old fashioned way. Amen. Old fashioned salvation, that's the kind I got. I think that's the only kind there is. But there's some other things called salvation that aren't really salvation, but I got the old fashioned kind. Amen. Well, we learned a couple new songs since we've been here. So uh, we're going to sing one of them. This man some were calling a king And as the crowd shouted, crucify him The soldiers let me go free What kind of man, guilty of nothing Would suffer the shame and disgrace Hang on a cross, despised and rejected So willing to die Thomas, for three years I followed, I saw every wonder and sign. They say that he's risen, that his grave is empty, but I just can't believe he's alive. Now standing before me, Jesus shows me the wounds in his hands and his side. I knew him and loved him, but oh, how I failed him that night. I promised Jesus that I'd never leave him, 
I'd willingly lay down my life. But there at his trial, I stood by the fire. I denied him three times. What kind of man pours out his mercy on someone who stumbles and falls with no way to earn it, no way to deserve it. Forgiveness still came after all at Calvary for someone like me. Oh, I've been Barabbas, the guilty set free. And I have been Thomas the doubt to redeem yes I've been all three what kind of man bleeds for the worthless to save him whatever it takes what kind of man would rescue a sinner and offer a man Blessings, the greatest of salvation. Amen. That God will love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. Amen. He didn't wait for us to become his friends. He died for us when we were his enemies. Amen. Thank God for that. Well, we'll sing one more. You girls sing uh, for all he's done. Sing it. Amen. Every good thing we have, God, God gave to us. Every good thing. God gave to us. Thank you. 
you up now. That's a blessing, 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 blessing. It's already on. You just got to put it on because it's already on. Oh, that's the birthday girl there. That's the real. Trying to find. I had to. Here we are, right here. While he sort of gets his breath, gets ready to preach to us. Uh, uh, Kevin's not here tonight. He's over, at the, he's over at the prison, jail, preaching. So I'm going to do his job. This is from the uh, Messers in Ecuador. And uh, uh, says that they uh, uh, had a young couple in the church. They, they, when they got, first got there, this young couple, uh, well, this, they were young, not yet married, and they met in church. Good place to meet, isn't it? And over the course of the time, they've courted and dated and now they're married. And both of them are, have surrendered to the ministry to help out there in that church. Isn't that good? Yeah. And uh, then it goes and he talks about, uh, and when they, there, most of them are Roman Catholics. And, and when a Roman Catholic gets saved, a lot of the family turns their back on them. Especially when they see them follow through and get them, when they get baptized by immersion. So he said, we had some who really, uh, that was a that was a trying time for them because they knew their families were not for that, and uh, so uh, they had a, they had a special fair in town, and uh, they went there, handed out five thousand tracks. Great day, that's good, and so things are going well there. They continue to pray because they always need prayer and uh, and for health and things of that sort. This is from the Goings family out in Arizona. And Spanish ministry out there, and the desert. And he said, "It is, it is, it is a desert. <laughs> and not only sometimes is it a desert physically, but sometimes it's a desert spiritually." But he said, "God's given some good services. He thanks the Lord for that." There was another church close by them, an independent church that had a storm come through and about tore the whole building down. So he and some of his men, he's an electrician by trade went there and was able to restore the building, get it back up and get power back on. And he said that was a great blessing. And, uh, and so their church is doing real good there with the Hispanics in Arizona. And this is Brother Solomon and Christina Alawalabi. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, they're in Nigeria, West Africa. And we've been supporting this couple probably 40 years, 39 to 40 years. And uh, I, I, I love, re I always remember when we first met him, when he first came here, and just he and his wife, and I don't think they had any children at the time, but he was telling the story, how he got called to preach, and uh, he, uh, matter of fact, his father was a, a chief of a tribe, and he was, he was scheduled to be the next chief of that tribe as a little boy, and to do that, they had to put certain marks on your face. So when you see him, of course, they're not as bad now as he used to be because he's gotten older. And he got saved and come to the United States, to Tennessee Temple, to uh, get his education, get his Bible training. Well, when he left Nigeria, he only had 10 bucks. Well, somebody picked his pocket in, in the airport in New York. He didn't have enough money to get from, he had to go from, he flew into one airport and had to get a bus to the other airport to fly to Chattanooga. And he said, he said, uh, they told him, said, you do not ever put your luggage down or somebody will steal your luggage. Well, they already stole his wallet. He didn't. So now his wallet's gone, and he's got to go outside the, the terminal. And, of course, the door is there, and he says, I cannot put my luggage down. How am I going to get out? He said, God, you got to work this out. Of course, he's got that broken English. Oh, God, you got to help, help me out. Brother Solomon needs help, God. So he walks toward the door, and of course, there are automatic doors. He don't know it. And the doors open automatically. He said, well, praise God. <laughs> he did it for Moses. He did it for Solomon. <laughs> when he gets outside, he sits down. He's got no money. Got to get to the other airport. Get his, got his ticket. And he's sitting there, and a guy comes out. And it's, it's a, it's a, I think it's a, a black Presbyterian preacher or something like that. And said, you know, where are you from? He told him. He said, I'm, told him his name. I'm, 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 I've got to get to another plane. Somebody's got me. He said, well, that's where I'm going. Come on, I'll pay you, I'll pay you cab fare. And so 
He got it. He said, and so they, he, and once, once they got in the cab, he said, where are you going, young man? He said, I'm going to Chattanooga, Tennessee. And the guy said, that's where I'm going. <laughs> so they got on the plane, sat right beside each other, got off. He paid for his cab fare to Tennessee Temple. Well, when he got there, I don't know why I'm telling the story, taking your preaching time up. And this is his letter, and uh, he's a grandpa now. But he said, uh, he got there. Tennessee Temple and foreign student. And uh, he got to his little dorm, little room. Of course, there's several guys in the same dorm. He said, now, he said, God, <laughs> I, I, I need toiletry items. I need soap, deodorant, <laughs> toothpaste. Solomon has no money. <laughs> so he goes to the bed, and none but known to him, the ladies of, of uh Tennessee Temple, what was, what was it? But, but, Highland Park ladies made sure all the preacher boys got a care package. So on his bed was everything he needed. Praise God, <laughs> manna from heaven. <laughs> well, he, he goes and he gets up the next morning. Guy goes to his first class. He gets to his first class. And his arms are on fire. He said, my arm's are on fire. I do not know what's wrong. And so uh, he finally has to go and, and, and get some or wash rag and wash his under his arm. And so he couldn't figure out what it was. When he got back to the room, he told the guy, he said, I spread the order, but it burned. He said, that's, no, that's spray starch. <laughs> what is spray starch? And he went to the cafeteria, never had a French fry in his life, and he got some French fries. He said, Solomon loved French fries. <laughs> he said, God, it would be wonderful if I could get a job where, they, where French fries are made. <laughs> and sure enough, the next week, they gave him a job in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I told you that story. Here's a letter. Now, that's been close to 40 years ago. He comes, gets his education, goes back, and now the church he pastors has anywhere from 30 to 40 churches out of his church. Matter of fact, the offering, the money we send him, he doesn't even need. He gives it to, to the other preachers there. Matter of fact, they have a, uh, their church, uh, and, and they have Blue Mountain Bible College, Bible College there, have a, they have a Christian Academy there. And uh, so they're in the, they just, they just, that's the way they operate. He says, now, they still have problems. He said, the Pentecostals really are just trying to take over where they're at. And so anyway, that's from Brother Solomon. And you've never met him, so there he is. And I think he's only been back here a couple of times over the years. And, uh, and so anyway. All right, preacher, are you ready? All right, and uh, uh, you've got uh, about 10 minutes, okay? <laughs> and uh, he knows better than that, amen? That's a minute for every point. Yeah. Amen. That's oh, okay. Amen. Brother Solomon Olabi, he's one of the first missionaries I ever remember meeting. Really? Our church in Kentucky that we were members of uh, supported him, mm -hmm. and... Uh, and we, when he, when he came to the church, um, we were just all amazed. You know, we're in backwoods, Kentucky, and we hardly, you know, even knew any black folks. And uh, and so he came, and he told he told a lot of that story right there. But I hadn't heard it in probably about thirty years. So, uh, Amen. What a blessing. You know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful for men of God who have been faithful through the years, Amen. like Brother Solomon Amen. and like your pastor. And uh, I hope you don't mind, but I kind of borrow him as my pastor from time to time. And I uh, hope that's all right with you. He sure become a good friend of mine, and I, I thank the Lord for you, Preacher Baker. Amen. Well, it's Thanksgiving. Yes, yes, it is. And so I want to bring a couple thoughts to you tonight. We're just here to enjoy the Lord tonight. Amen, Amen. And uh, we're just going to enjoy the Lord. We're going to enjoy his blessings and his goodness. I know most times when I'm preaching, people are all, you know, 
I, I'm not, I don't really know how to be very nice. I told the kids, I said, I got a sweet message I'm preaching tonight. And they all looked at me like, yeah, I'm not sure I believe that or not. But uh, anyways, uh, we just want to enjoy the Lord. Amen. And so just a few minutes tonight, I want us to uh, turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And what a passage of scripture this is regarding uh, these little uh, guideposts for Christian living. Amen? Just a little quick hits. A little quick hits through here. Starting in verse 16, it says, Rejoice evermore. And boy, would God we'd get hold of that. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Then verse 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And it goes on to say, quench not the spirit. I believe these are connected. Yes, sir, it is. I believe when we do not give thanks, it quenches the spirit of God. Exactly he says, despise not prophesying. That means enjoy the preaching. That means don't have a low opinion of the preaching of God's word. That's right, preacher. Amen. It seems like more and more churches that, that we go to and we hear about, they're, they're doing away with the preaching. They want more singing and less preaching. And they're despising prophesying, but we should not despise prophesying. We should uh, enjoy and appreciate the preaching of God's word. Then he says, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. You know what he's saying? Judge. Amen. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, he's saying judge. Make a judgment. Amen. You take, you got all things before you. You've got, uh, you've got some things that, that you should hold fast to. Right. And you've got other things you should let go. Drop yeah. it like a hot rock. Amen. Right. Amen. And so there's all these uh, uh, quick hits. Verse 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. My, what, what preaching we could do from these verses here. What instructions for godly living. But being it's uh, Thanksgiving, we're going to focus in on verse 18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you. Lord, we say that so often. It, and it really should roll off our lips easily to be thankful but Lord, uh, though it's easy to say, Lord, I pray that it would not become meaningless, that uh, as we take time to thank you for what you've done, that, Lord, it would come from our hearts and comes from the very depths of our soul. Lord, we want to say thank you tonight. Lord, uh, as we examine some of the things we can be thankful for uh, tonight, I pray, dear God, that our hearts would really be a move toward true gratitude toward you. We're told that in the last days, one of the grievous sins will be unthankfulness. Lord, we truly are living in an unthankful society. We have more than what we've ever had before, and yet there's so much, uh, uh, so much murmuring and complaining in this world. Lord, I pray that as Christians, we would not mimic the world, but Lord, that we would realize how good we have it. And Lord, that we'd be careful to thank you and praise you for all that you've done. Now, Lord, I pray that you would guide us now in these next few moments. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. I've heard it said before, and I probably have said it before, in reading this verse, in everything give thanks. And uh, I've said, well, you know, you may not be thankful for everything, but you can be thankful in everything. And, but I had, to, uh, I had to back up on that yeah. because not only does the Bible tell us to give thanks in everything, but it tells us to give thanks for all things. Yes, Amen. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Yeah, and in verse number 18... It says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. 
giving thanks always. What's that next word? For all things. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here's what I want us to think about tonight. When we think about all the things that we're thankful for, usually we're thinking about the things that we're thankful for that we have. Amen? Yes. We have salvation. We have forgiveness of sins. Yes. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, many of us have been blessed with a spouse and children and home and, and family and friends. Uh, we, we're thankful for this book, amen. amen? We're thankful for the daily benefits the Bible says that he loads us with. Yes, he does. Amen? amen. I mean, we, we don't just get a little piece of pie every now and again. He daily loads us with benefits. Woo. Each and every day. And so we think about this and we think about the things that we have. But tonight for a little bit, I want us to think about the things, being thankful for the things that we don't have. Oh, my. Amen? You ever prayed for something then later on, uh, God didn't, he didn't give it to you and later on you were thankful that he didn't Amen. give it to you? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for the prayers, not only that he has answered, I'm thankful for the prayers that he has said no to. Amen, given a, a negative answer to because later on, uh, sometimes later on, he'll allow us to see that those things we thought we needed and we thought we, it would benefit us, they would have brought us down instead of uh, bringing us up, amen? amen. And uh, I, I want to thank the Lord for some of the things I don't have tonight. Yeah, preacher. All right, we're just going to enjoy, enjoy yeah. it here a little bit tonight. Number one, I want to thank God I'm thankful that I don't have a monkey for my parents. Amen? I'm thankful that I don't have monkeys for parents. I'm thankful that God created man in his own image. Amen? We didn't evolve from monkeys or uh, from uh, apes, amen, or from tadpoles. Uh, we came, uh, listen, we were created by the hand of God and in the image of God. I thank God for that. I'm thankful that I have a purpose in life. And, uh, you know, if you, if you uh, attribute our, our uh, creation or our coming about uh, to evolution, then, uh, you, then you have no purpose. And the only purpose is survival. Well, guess what? We're all going to die. Amen. <laughs> If that's the great purpose in life is to just keep living, guess what? We're all going to be failures. Yeah, right. yes, sir. No, we've been created with a greater purpose in mind. Yes, sir. We've been created by God. And uh, I'm thankful that we're created in his image. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm thankful I don't have a monkey for my parents. Can I get an amen there? Amen. 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 I'm thankful, number two, that I don't have a magpie for a wife. Oh, you Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Not meddling. Yeah. Amen. I'm thankful I don't have a magpie for a wife. You say, what do you mean, preacher? Well, a magpie is a person who just chatters idly. <laughs> I've met some unfortunate souls that have magpies for wives. Amen. And I'm sure glad I don't have a magpie for a wife. Amen. <laughs> Woo, moving on. Amen. Amen. Hey, you know, 1 Timothy chapter 5 says this, verse 13. About these young women, they said they, they, they learned to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies. Thank God I don't have a busy body wife. Amen. God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful. I'm just saying I'm thankful That's tonight. Right. Amen. That's good stuff. Amen. Woo. Proverbs 21, 9 says, and it's also found in Proverbs 25. You know, we always talk about when God says something twice, oh you better listen up, right? It says it's better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Amen. Woo. Hallelujah. So you said, this is a nice message? Yeah, this is, a nice, this is as nice as it gets, amen. Uh, I'm saying what I'm thankful for. That's right, amen. 
I'm thankful. Now, you know what? If I had a magpie for a wife, you know the last thing I'd be wanting to do? Live in a bus all my life. <laughs> That'd be the last thing I'd be wanting to do. I'd be looking for the biggest house I could find, amen? And somewhere where there's a nice rooftop terrace. <laughs> Maybe have a couch up there, you know? Maybe have, you know, instead of a man cave, have a man roof. <laughs> Thank God, I'm thankful. <laughs> I'm thankful I don't have a magpie for a wife. I'm thankful I don't have miscreants for children. Amen? You say, what's a miscreant? I had to look it up too. I had to start with an M. So I had to look, I had to find something. Miscreants are people who behave badly or lawlessly. Oh my. Amen? I'm thankful that my children aren't miscreants. You know what I have to thank for that? Uh, other than the Lord, I have my wife to thank for that. Amen? That's right. Preacher. Probably if I had a magpie for a wife, I'd have miscreant children. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm just having fun here tonight. Huh? Hey, you know what? If my children were miscreants, you know that would do what that would do? That would remove me from being able to be in the ministry. Yes, sir. Titus chapter 1 verse 6 says, talking about uh, the bishop, and if any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. Boy. Amen. That's right. I'm thankful for my children. You know, uh, Sarah's our oldest child. She's 20 years old. Now, to most of you, that, does, that means she's not a child anymore. And you know what? To me, she'll always be my little girl, but I know she's, she's not a child anymore. But she's still living in my house, in my bus. Amen? So that still puts her under my authority. I'm thankful. She could, give, she could give me all kinds of grief if she wanted to. My son, Benjamin, he's 19. He could give me all kinds of grief if he wanted to, but they don't. I'm thankful for that. Yes, I'm really thankful amen, for that. Amen. And I'm thankful. Listen, they know that if, that if dad says it, it's got to be that way. I'm thankful for that. That's good, preacher. Amen. 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 You know what? They're not perfect. Neither are you. Right. Neither am I. But I'm thankful they got a spirit of obedience toward their dad and mom. <laughs> I'm thankful they want to serve God and they love God. They want to see God glorified in their lives. I'm thankful that uh, they can be corrected. Amen. You know what unruly is? It means you can't, put, you can't put any rules to them. They want to buy by the rules. And uh, I'm thankful that my children will abide by the rules. That's right. I'm thankful for that. Amen. Number whatever, number next. Four. I'm thankful I don't have a mummy for a savior. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful I don't have a mummy for a savior. I'm glad my savior, after he died on that cross for my sins, he went into that tomb, but he rose again the third day. Amen. I don't have a mummy for a savior. You know, you, you watch these, these Muslims and you read about them. They make that pilgrimage to Mecca. What are they doing there? What is Mecca? That's the, that's the, the, the uh, burial place of Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Their prophet is dead. Yeah. Our prophet is alive. <laughs> and he's alive forevermore. He's been quickened. I love that word quickened. The word quickened means to be made alive so as to never die again. <laughs> it's different than just being alive. It's being made alive so as to never die again. And guess what? Because he was quickened, we also are quickened by his life. Amen. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. We were dead. We were hopeless. We were, we were without life. But because our Savior rose again the third day, all those who place their faith in him, he quickens within us. Amen. I'm glad I don't have a mummy for a savior. I'm thankful for that. Amen. I'm glad I, I'm thankful I don't have a makeshift salvation. That's right. Yeah. Amen. What do you mean, preacher? I mean there's some power to the salvation that I have. You know, there's, there's something there in the scripture that talks about they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. They profess that they know God, 
but in works they deny him. Yeah, sure do. Being reprobate concerning all the good works. There, there's nothing in their life to back up what they say is true. Listen, I, I lived that life for a few years. But I'm thankful on August 10th, 1995, I got saved. I got born again. I love that expression, born again. Uh, because that, they're, they're, go back to that, there's new life. Yeah. You know, I, I've got to think about this preacher. Instead of asking people when they got saved, ask them when they were born again. Uh, that'd make a difference. Ask them when they're born, because saved is kind of, it's, it's, it's a good Bible term. Amen. There's nothing wrong with the word saved. But you know, it's always almost been overused to the point where people don't even know what it's talking about anymore. You saved? Do you know the Lord? Oh, yeah, I know the Lord. Tell me when you were born again. Tell me when the Spirit of God moved in and new life sprang up in your heart. When were you born again? Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Behold, if any man be in Christ, he is a... Uh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Yes, he is. Old things are passed away, and behold, I love that word behold right there. Behold, all things are become new. What does that mean? What that word behold means? It means you can see it. You see it. You can see it. Yes. You can see. Boy, I just, we're, we're, so, we're, we're so caught up in this culture of you can't question me. How dare you question me? How dare, how dare you think that I might not be saved? I don't think one way or the other. I just, I do like to ask people whether they're saved or not. Yeah. Right. You know what, ever since I got saved, I don't mind if people ask me if I'm saved. That's right. That's Never right. has bothered me. Never has. Matter of fact, I kind of enjoy it. Like it. <laughs> Are you saved? Yeah, yeah, let me tell you about when I got saved. Yeah. Yeah. I never understood people being upset if you ask them if they're saved. I'm just thankful that the salvation that I have is a makeshift. It's real. It's real. Amen, amen. Praise God. Preacher and I were talking today. He was, we were talking about sheep. He was telling me about that story when he was over in Israel and the shepherd calling the sheep. Now he had all those sheep and he said, I got 200 sheep here. And the preacher said, where are they? Oh, they're, they're around here. He wondered how do you keep tabs on all those sheep? He said, oh, they, they know my voice. There's a lost man. Yeah. Lost man, he's a Jew. Lost man. But he was given some biblical principles there. He said, my sheep hear my voice. They know my voice. They follow me. You know what sheep do? They follow the shepherd. Yes. Amen. Why? Because it's their nature to follow the shepherd. Amen. When was the last time you heard his voice? Oh, boy. When was the last time you heard his voice and you knew he was talking to you? Amen. I'm thankful. I don't have to make it up. I don't have to... Uh, try to give a good enough testimony so that people will believe me. Because really, it doesn't really matter to me whether you believe me or not. Amen. I'm saved. Whether you believe I'm saved or not doesn't make a, a, a lick of difference. Amen. <laughs> I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. That's right. Don't have to work it up. Don't have to prop it up. It's real. Yeah. And I'm thankful it's real. Yeah, I'm thankful I don't have a makeshift salvation. I'm thankful I don't have a morgue for a church. Amen. I'm thankful I don't have a morgue for a church. Preacher said a little while ago, he said, this is not a funeral. No. Amen. No. This is not a funeral home. No. Amen. I know you have funerals in here, but this is not a funeral home. No, this isn't a place of death. It's a place of life. Amen. Thank God for it. I thank God we can come into a church, start singing about the amazing grace of God and somebody raise their hand and somebody else, a tear come down their cheek, someone else stand up and shout. Yeah, preacher. Yeah. Now, I have seen that at some funerals, but it's rare to see at a funeral somebody shout. Usually, it's if it's a preacher's funeral or something. 
you know, something like that. But I, I've yet to see that in a funeral home. I've seen them in churches, but I've yet to see that happen in a funeral home. I think if somebody stood up and shouted in a funeral home, they'd probably have some more bodies to collect. <laughs> probably would, yeah. <laughs> you know what? When we lose loved ones, and I know you, you've, you've lost some loved ones this year. We've lost them yeah. right out of this church. But we don't sorrow as those who have no hope. Because, listen, we really haven't lost them at all. No, we haven't. We know exactly where they're at. Yes. Amen. Yes. Right. And we're going to see them again. Oh. If you're saved, you'll see them again. See them again. Right. Praise it's, just, it's just see you later. It's not goodbye. Right. It's see you later. Yeah, right. Amen. Yeah. Because of that, that blessed hope that we have yeah. as an anchor for the soul keeps us anchored. It keeps us from flying off. Amen. Oh, I'm glad we don't have a morgue for a church. I've been in some churches that were, that did resemble morgues. Oh, my. Walk in, and well, we set up, and we start singing, and I tell the kids, I said, listen, it doesn't matter whether they shout or whether they sit there like pow. they never, yeah, or, or pout. <laughs> sit there like, you know, you couldn't move them with a, with a tow truck. I said, we're singing for the Lord. Right. We're not singing for, now, I hope you all enjoyed the singing tonight, yeah. but we weren't singing for you. Right. We're singing for him. Right. Yeah. Singing for him. But you know what? It sure helps when the people are with you. Yeah, Amen. It does. It sure it does. does. We've been in some places. We get up there and sing. And my girls, man, they don't care where they're at. Lord touches them. Their, their hand's going to go up. There. Yeah, I like it. Amen. People look around. <laughs> what kind of group is that? Are they, are they waving at me? I'm glad I, I don't have a morgue for a church. I'm glad we can worship God. Yeah. I'm glad I don't have a myth for a Bible. Right. I'm thankful I don't have a myth for a Bible. Thank God the Bible says that these words, his word is forever settled in heaven. And that not one jot or one tittle shall pass away from, this, from these words here. Now, when I say these words, I'm not talking about some imaginary idea or some lost original. I'm talking about this book I'm holding in my hand, the King James Bible. That's right. This, this is not just a translation. These are the preserved words of Almighty God. Yes, it is, preacher. Yes, amen. 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 God didn't promise to preserve the concept of his words or his thoughts. He promised to preserve his words. His words. Words mean something. Yes, they do. You know, God, to, to the Lord, that means so much that he says he's magnified his word above all his name. How about that? When we talk about the name of Jesus yeah. and that, that, that at his name every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, the, the, the high and lofty name of Jesus, God said he's put his word even above that. Hey, so how can that be? Well, listen, my dad always taught me a man's only as good as his word. Amen. That's right. That's right. Only as good as his word. If you can't trust his word, you can't trust the man. That's right. right? Amen. Amen. If we can't trust this book, we can't trust the God who gave it to us. But we can trust yes, this we book. Can. It's 100% accurate. Yes, it is. 100% true. Yes. There's no myths or fairy tales in this book. Mm. Wow. It's the very words of God. It's 100% true. Thank God. He said every word of God is pure. Yes, it is. Now, you know what? I love your preacher. I thank God for him. To me, he's one of the best Christians I know. But he can't say every word of his is pure. No, he can't. And I sure can't say every word of mine is pure. And if we went around this room tonight, uh, we couldn't say any of us, every, every word of ours is pure. Right. right. But God, we can say that about him. Every word, everything he's ever said is pure. What does pure mean? It means it's clean. Yep. It means it's true. It means it's without mixture of error, 100% pure. That's the words of God. Why wouldn't we trust it? Amen? 
Why wouldn't we read it? Why wouldn't we say, Lord, just get this word in me? I was listening to a preacher a while back, and he said, uh, he's talking about reading your Bible and how we ought to read the Bible. He said, uh, he said, I've talked to people, and they've said, well, preacher, I just, I don't read a lot of the Bible because I can't retain it all. He said, I know. I said, we, we have our limitations. Uh, even in a message like this, you're not going to retain everything you've heard here. You're going to remember the monkey point, probably, and probably the magpie point, and maybe one or two others, I don't know, but we don't retain everything that we hear. But he said, don't let that stop you from reading the Word of God. That's right. You don't have to retain all of it for it to help you. He said, uh, he said, well, my vessel, you know, it can only hold so much. He said, well, you know, there's all kinds of vessels. Well, a colander. Mm-hmm. Think about a colander in your kitchen. Ladies, you use a colander. It doesn't hold much, does it? No, it doesn't. But you know what? You still need to put the water to it, to wash it, to cleanse it. Amen? You may not retain everything you read, but praise God, the water, the word's going through you. That's right, preacher. Amen, it'll cleanse you, it'll keep you pure and right and keep you, keep you loving the Lord and thanking God. And you know, every now and again, you'll be reading and something will just stay with you. That's right. Say, Boy, that's good. Thankful that I don't have a myth for a Bible. Let me give you this one, I'll be done. I'm thankful that I don't have a mirage for a future. Oh, yeah. I'm glad that heaven is real. Aren't you glad heaven is real? It's it's not just a fairy tale. It's not just a make-believe thing to make us feel better about death. Heaven is more real than the body in which we live. Because heaven is forever and these bodies aren't. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. Amen. I'm thankful. I am thankful I'm not going to spend forever in this body. Come on. Amen. Isn't it amazing? We fall in love with this thing. So, so, and yet it gives us so much grief and pain. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And you say, well, you know, I'm pretty proud of my body. Well, just don't shower for a few days. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See how proud you are of it then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't brush your teeth for a while. <laughs> yeah. You know what's in us? Death. You know what death is? Corruption. Uh-huh. Our bodies are corrupt. Yes, they are. They're passing away. They're dying a little bit every day. Aren't you glad <laughs> that God's got another one prepared for us? <laughs> That's going to last forever, and it's going to be like unto his. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not a fairy tale. Heaven is real. It's not a myth. It's not a mirage. It's not a crutch for the weak-minded. It's a sure and solid fact. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. You know what he's saying? Listen, Jesus is saying, if heaven's not real, I'm a liar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. And we know from uh, uh, Titus chapter 1, it's impossible for God to lie. Yeah. Impossible. impossible. Can't be done. So when the Lord says, I've prepared you a place, we know that he's got a place for us. Oh, my. For the saved by grace, yeah. there is a resting place. Hallelujah. It's not a mirage. Oh, boy. Listen, I, I'm 42. Just had a birthday a couple weeks ago. 42 years young. Woo. And I feel like I probably got a lot of years ahead of me, but I don't know that. No, you don't. Not down here. But I do know that I have eternity awaiting me right. in a place that we call heaven. <laughs> Bible says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Once we get up there, guess what? All of the things that hold us back from serving him, from worshiping him, from loving him, all of those things will be removed. Now, you know what? I love the Lord tonight. 
but I don't love them like I ought to. I don't love them like I want to. Come on. I'm trying to serve the Lord tonight, but I don't, des- I don't serve him like he deserves to be served. I'm trying to worship the Lord tonight, but I, I'm just not able to worship him the way that he deserves. Oh, but up there, I will be able yes. to love him, to serve him, yes. to worship him yes. with all of my being. Yes, preacher. Amen, amen. Up there is when God finally gets what he paid for. That's good. Come on. That's good, preacher. Amen. He, he redeemed us on the cross of Calvary, right? But there's still a part of us that's waiting for that redemption. We're groaning. The whole creation is groaning and moaning because we're under this curse. And the Lord paid for all of us, amen? He paid for the creation. Yes. He paid for us spirit, soul, and body, but right now he's only getting part of the return on his investment. Isn't that something? But one day, one day, one day he's going to have all of me. And I'm going to take all of me and worship him. And love him. You ever get frustrated at yourself because you don't love the Lord like you ought to? Uh, yeah. I do. I look at what he gave to me and he gave his son. He didn't hold anything back. And I look at my life, what am I holding back? So many times I'm holding way too much back. You know why? Because I have split loyalties. <laughs> because the spirit loves him, but the flesh loves this. But on that day, he gets it all. (laughs) He gets it all. And that's not a mirage. That's not make-believe. That's a sure and certain thing. I'm looking for that trumpet to sound. I'm enjoying life here. I'm loving life. I'm really enjoying it. I love doing what we're doing. I love singing with my family. I love seeing God work God saves souls. And God just provides needs. And God connect us with people that we can love on and try to help. But if that trumpet should sound tonight, yeah. I wouldn't be complaining. Amen. No, Amen. No, no, no. I am thankful. I'm thankful for all that I have. I'm thankful for some of the things I don't have. Amen. Oh. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, tonight. You're a good God. You're a great Father. Lord, I I see how you are a Father to me. Lord, it makes me want to be a good son to you. Lord, every, every good gift and every perfect gift has come down from the Father of lights. Come from you no shadow of turning in you. There's nothing, there's there's no fault in you, no guile in you, no. God, I look at myself and I see, Lord, I want to love you more. I want to serve you more. I want to worship you more. God, tonight, I'm just so thankful. I'm thankful for your provision. I'm thankful for your providence in my life. Thankful for your power. Thankful for your people. Thank you for your purity, dear God. Lord, I pray that in this Thanksgiving season, that we'd not miss an opportunity, not only to be thankful toward you, but Lord, to be a witness for you. And he will be with family. Some are lost, some are astray and away from you. God, I pray that we would, our gratitude and our thankfulness would be a light to them. They would see there's something real in our relationship with you and they would be drawn to you. God, I thank you for this church, for the friendships, Lord, that you've allowed us to establish here. And God, 
I pray, Father, that you would just continue to bless uh, Preacher Baker and the church here. Uh, Lord, continue to yes. use them, Lord. They're such an encouragement to so many. God, keep them strong. and yes. Even in the midst of their grief and seeing some graduate to heaven, God, I pray that others would uh, step up and fill the void yes. and continue the work that you've called them to do. Lord, thank you most of all for Jesus, the precious blood he shed for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Preacher, come on. Stand our feet. And the Lord tonight, so thankful, so thankful. I have what I don't have. I can testify. I'm so thankful. Some of the prayers I prayed God said no to. What a great God. Great God. Marvelous. Wonderful. Powerful. All-knowing. No matter where you go, he's there. Omnipresent. Everywhere all the time. With everybody. Sees everything. Hears everything. Knows everything. What a God. The devil can't do that. devil's power is limited but not God's power the devil's presence is limited but not God many times the devil has to regroup but not God devil has plans, but God's got greater plans, bigger plans. Amen. Amen. Had it been a good evening? I enjoyed that. Never thought about that. But uh, that's great. All right. Y'all got those things? You wrote them down? Thomas back said, you write that down? She said, you write it down. <laughs> He's going to get what he paid for. Did you get that? Going to get a, he's going to get, that's when he's going to get a full return when we get that glorified body. Oh, boy, I can't wait. All right, listen, I sure hope that you'll be careful going home tonight and that you'll be careful of these holidays and, and uh, have a, enjoy your time with your family, your friends, wherever you may go, who may be coming in. And uh, now we've been announcing this service, changing it for the last month. You know, so everybody in our church should know we had church tonight. Just in case somebody comes tomorrow night, Okay, Chris will be here. <laughs> or Tommy. Or Mark. Or Curtis. <laughs> I nominate Tommy Dandridge. We'll call Tommy. Amen. All right. Well, let's pray. We'll be dismissed. And I sure hope that uh, uh, you'll, have a, you'll have a good night's rest. And Lord Jesus, thank you for being so good to us tonight. I really have enjoyed myself. I really have. My heart's rejoiced tonight because of what I've heard. I've heard the Bible preached, and I'm so thankful for that. Thankful for the church family, Lord, that loves you, loves each other, loves the preacher, and loves preachers. I'm thankful for that. Lord, I ask you now to watch over the church family. Many will be traveling. Some will have folks coming in. Lord, I pray for Brother Mark and his wife and his children. That you will give them, Lord, divine protection on the highway as they uh, head up north uh, in a day or two. Please, God, be with them. Watch over them. Give them great meetings up there. Now, Father, we thank you for loving us, being so good to us. Help us to do our very best to be good Christians every day, all day long. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen.